No matter how awesome our art is, we're going to need a good looking shop if we want to be taken seriously as an artist. The first part of having a profile that is successful is simply filling in all of our needed information and we can do that under account details. The most important two things here are your short bio and your profile description right here where it says public profile. Your short bio is just that, a short bio that will show up a couple places including right at the top of your profile. It says that um, it should be 140 characters and if it's not, it's going to get cut off like mine did right there. Your public profile description is kind of similar to the product descriptions that we talked about in the previous lesson and you kind of want to follow the same principles, but there are a few differences. Um, when we talked about our product descriptions, we were focusing on not only catching the eyes of users, but also the eyes of search engines. So we had our link resume point to a bunch of different places on the web. Our public profile description, however, is going to be seen by a lot of eyes. Instead of having to click a button to even see it, it's right there. We can take advantage of this by trying to focus on images, something that will catch the eye and bring in clicks. To add an image that is also a link, all you have to do is put an exclamation point in front of the link to the image as well as after it, and then a colon, and then the link that we're actually linking to. You can find all the information on how to format your text so that you can link and make your text bold and all the fun things like that just by clicking that link down there and then you'll be brought here and you'll be given the information right here. In addition to adding pictures, you can actually embed a YouTube video. So consider making a video introducing yourself or if you do traditional art, maybe painting a picture or something like that. There's no limit to how long this description can be. So take time to write a paragraph, um, kind of giving your brand and yourself a little bit of flavor, a little bit of hook, a personality that a viewer can vibe with. Your description is going to show up right here in your portfolio and you can also edit it right from here. You can see in mine I have um, links to my other websites because I'm really trying to promote those as well as an introductory paragraph which kind of shows what I'm about in a non-direct way and then I have images linking to other websites as well as um, specific categories on the Redbubble site with products. Back under account settings, um, make sure you have a avatar set up if you haven't already. Um, you can also add a cover image, which is a really good idea. And it's 600 pixels tall by 2400 pixels wide. And this is where it sits on your profile. And as it gets wider, it gets bigger and it'll also scale down. So it's a really good opportunity to showcase specific art. Uh, maybe if your brand is centered around yourself, you can have a picture of yourself as the artist, or you can just put a collage of different pieces that you've made. Down under artist tools, you'll see product pricing as the top option. Uh, we mentioned in the general strategy that one way to make more money on Redbubble is to increase your percentage commission or your margin. As I said before, I highly recommend upping the stickers from 20% to something like 50% in order to maximize your revenue. And I don't think that this will really cause you to sell less. If it does, um, the sales that you do make will more than make up for that financially. Personally, I haven't adjusted the markup percentage of many other products besides stickers. I kind of leave it at the around 20% that Redbubble sets, but that's completely up to you. One thing I would not recommend is to lower your percentage in an attempt to get more sales. Uh, the people that buy these products know that they're already expensive. They are having an emotional attachment to the product. It's something they love. It's a piece of art that they love that they absolutely have to have. And they're probably not going to make a decision based on if it's a dollar or two cheaper than the other shirts on the site. If they like your design, they're going to buy it. Underneath pricing, you'll see Google Analytics. And this is a powerful tool and it'll help you keep track of how many views you're getting and things like that. So if you have a Google Analytics account or if you want to get one, here's how you do it. You get your web property ID and you put it right in here. 
A little further down, you'll see a link that says promote. Under the promote link, you're going to see that you can send a message automatically to everyone who buys a piece of your work. This is another opportunity to let your brand personality shine through and connect with the consumer. If you scroll down, you'll see that there's an opportunity to put a little widget on a website with HTML. So if you use like Tumblr or something like that, you might want to use that. The last link under your account settings is probably the most important and it's linked to other sites. Here you can put your website, Facebook page, Instagram, Twitter, all these social sites and it'll show up in your bio. Under link to other sites, you can put in your website, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Tumblr, a um, couple other sites, and it'll show up in your bio. This is good for people that wanna find you and follow you on social media, as well as search engines, because they're putting together the web of your work more accurately. Making a good looking profile is easy, but requires a little bit of feng shui. So take time to make sure that the elements are working together. When a user is looking at your profile, they're immediately going to see your collections. Your most powerful tool in terms of actually getting sales directly from your profile is these things called collections. If you're not familiar with collections, they're just collections of artwork. You can put up to a hundred of your pieces in one collection. If you don't currently have any collections, you add them through your portfolio. You'll have a list over here and you can just click new collection and add your collection. While you're still in your portfolio, you can actually drag over to here and add things to the collection. You can see that it actually did add that piece. Another option, if you hit manage portfolio, you can do this sort of in bulk. You can select and then apply them to a specific collection. When you're uploading work, all you have to do is click the checkbox next to the collection at the bottom of the upload page. Collections are the most valuable tool for adding sales, not just because they showcase pieces of art on your profile, but of what they do when you actually look at an individual piece that's in a collection. So here is that piece that I just added to a collection a minute ago. And if we scroll down, we'll see that we have these um, little wheels down here which show more artwork. And these are actually the collections that this belongs to. And if I didn't have any collections, all it would show is this, which is basically just showing my recently added work and doesn't have things that the user might actually be interested in. It just happens to be that I uploaded a lot of fractal work recently, but if I uploaded different work, you wouldn't see any more fractals until you get down here and you'll see that it's part of all fractal art, fractal starscapes and future art fashion collections. Use collections to keep your designs organized as well as make sure that your old art is still getting views. In your profile, you also get the opportunity to highlight a specific collection. And you do that with this little arrow right here. Highlighting a collection shows the first six pieces in that collection. It's a great place to shine and show off a few pieces of artwork at the very front and center. A well laid out profile is like the feng shui of a room. Be sure to take some time just to get an impression of the profile without looking at any individual elements. See how it strikes you and then ask others for their opinions. They might see something that you won't and it's always the outside eye that you're concerned with, not your own. As the artist, you're always going to have your own opinion of what you want shown or how you think that you're being presented when in reality, the person who's seeing it might think completely differently. Take time to focus on the vibe that you're getting from your page. And also remember that you're the author, so you're going to need a fresh pair of eyes, like a friend, colleague, spouse, dog, to give you their opinion and let you know what you might need to change. You also might have pieces of work that you're particularly fond of, but other people might find offensive, repulsive, or just plain ugly. In any case, show your profile to as many people as possible and ask for their feedback. Show them some other pieces of art and say, hey, what you think I should feature? If you don't know which art pieces to feature, you can go buy your sales. And I don't mean try to promote designs that haven't been selling well so they'll even out sales. 
I mean promoting your designs that are already selling. If a design is selling, it means that it's going to keep selling. Try to promote your top selling designs as much as possible on your profile. This includes making top selling artwork on the cover of each collection. You can change the featured image for the collection by going to this little settings icon and then right where it says cover image, pick out the new image. Let's quickly review what we learned in this lesson. Under account details, there's a few things that we want to fill out, including pricing details, uh, linking to other sites, as well as Google Analytics and editing our cover image. We talked about the importance of having a good profile description or bio, which shows up right here. We talked about using a lot of visual images as links to get clicks as well as eyes. We talked about collections as the most powerful thing for driving sales. Promoting products that are selling well by making them cover images is a good way to make sure they keep getting seen and keep getting sold. Finally, we talked about toning in the feng shui of our profile and having an outside pair of eyes take a look and give us advice.